uh, hand it over to Noel. Give us one second. All right, good morning. Our opening in this morning is Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, number 618 in the Hymnal 1982. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. 
give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Revelations. After this, I, John, looked and there was a great multitude. Uh, sorry, it was blocking the screen. Um, that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs, to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered to me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him, and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all, from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust him, who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. A reading from John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this when he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. A reading from Matthew. So, oh. Thanks, Tate. That was awesome. You're good, you're good, don't worry. <laughs> A reading from Matthew. A 
reading from Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today, we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, which honors, as the name suggests, all the saints. I want to spend some time this morning talking with you about this tradition in the church, but also the invitation this feast day offers for our lives. But first, a note about this word, remembrance. We begin with the word membrane, which is a connective tissue that is laced throughout our bodies. Taken with the prefix re, we, in, we invoke the act of reconnecting that which was meant to be connected. To remember is to lace the membranes back together again. Remembrance is also the central act of Christian worship. Every time we gather, we remember the series of covenants God has made with God's people throughout the canon of Holy Scripture in hopes of finding those same points of connection with God's love and mercy in our own lives. We remember the Last Supper that Jesus ate with his disciples as we symbolically partake in that same holy meal. Former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, reminds us of the power of this holy act of remembrance with these words. The naming of the dead Jesus as the Lord and judge on whom all lines of history converge. Our act of remembrance is not just symbolic then, but a thoughtful invocation of God's holiness. In the church calendar, we tend to conflate two separate celebrations, all saints and all souls. The distinction between the two is left over from the Catholic tradition, which made separate celebrations for those who had gone to heaven and faithfully confessed their sins versus those who were likely residing in purgatory. Though the Episcopal Church does not subscribe to the same theology, the two days remain separate on our calendar. All Souls on November 2nd is meant to honor all of those who have died. Tomorrow night, we'll take time to remember those individuals as we pr prayerfully walk through the yard, remembering their lasting impact. All Saints, which we celebrate today, is meant to focus on the entirety of the Christian community with no distinction between the living and the dead. The Catechism in the Book of Common Prayer reminds us, the communion of saints is the whole family of God the living and the dead, those whom we love and those whom we hurt, bound together in Christ by sacrament, prayer, and praise. I want to go out on a limb and say that it feels to me like we need this feast day more than ever this year. I don't know about you, but I am exhausted by the physical distance between you and me ultimately driving us apart in ways that are totally disorienting. I'm exhausted 
by a conversation that is saturated with partisan politics. I am exhausted by the ways in which our society consistently preferences the value of light-skinned lives over those with darker skin. I need to be regrounded in the holiness of each and every one of us. I'm gonna ask Isabel to share an image with you now because that's something we can do when we're worshiping online. And this image uh, sits on my bookshelf in my office and helps to remind me of the connectedness of the family of God. It's a photo from a trip that I led to England with a group of college students from the University of Texas and Texas A&M University, a sign of God's abiding presence that these two rival universities would do anything together. These two college ministries made a pilgrimage to the seat of the Anglican Communion to become more connected to the roots of our faith. We spent time in Canterbury in London, but this particular photo is from Coventry Cathedral. The cathedral in Coventry was irreparably bombed during war, World War II. But the dean at the time led the people of Coventry on an extraordinary journey towards forgiveness of those who had destroyed their beautiful Gothic cathedral. One small piece of this soul-wrenching work including, included leaving the ruins of that burned cathedral exactly as they were. They would build a new sanctuary, but not, as was custom, on the same footprint as the old. As they began construction of the new cathedral, they thoughtfully connected the old and new sanctuaries. Most importantly, to enter the new cathedral, you must walk through the ruins of the old cathedral. You were forced to physically experience the need for forgiveness before receiving the sacraments of Jesus. Here's where this photo comes in. The entrance to the newly constructed cathedral is entirely glass with etchings of both saints of God and a whimsical representation of angels. It's a magnificent work of art. But as you stop to examine this beautiful entrance to an imposing space, the worshiper is included in the image. This photo shows both angels of God, saints of our tradition, and my motley group of college students. As they enter the cathedral, worshipers are reminded of the sanctity, not only of those who have gone before, but of the important witness of their own lives. You can see their reflection there in the bottom of the picture. The reflective power of the glass and the gift of the artist's perspective bring to life the power of All Saints Sunday. Who you are is enough, not because of anything you have or have not done, but because of who God is. The act of remembering our place in the communion of saints is holy work. You can take that. Thanks. This morning's gospel reading is Matthew's version of the Beatitudes, arguably the most famous sermon in all of scripture. The interesting thing about this passage is that I find it causes interpreters to stumble in a way that I don't think Jesus ever anticipated. More often than not, I hear questions about how to become poor in spirit. What do I do if I'm not full of mourning? And how should I seek out opportunities to be persecuted for righteousness sake? But I don't think that was where Jesus was pointing us. The Beatitudes are not an instructive on how to behave. This is not a laundry list of experiences we are to systematically seek out. Rather, it is a descriptor of who is a part of God's community. They are written as a reminder to each and every gathering of God that if our community does not include those who are specifically named as full of blessings, we've drawn the lines too tightly. Jesus was intimately familiar with the ways of humanity and knew of our tendencies to hoard and self-promote. The familiar words of Jesus ought to be written on our hearts as a reminder to draw the circle wider. In God's economy, there are more than enough blessings for all. 
We do not need to be in the business of seeking them out as though they will go on back order. This communion of saints is the whole family of God, the living and the dead, those whom we love and those whom we hurt, bound together in Christ by sacrament, prayer, and praise. In remembering the Beatitudes, and the communion that supports and sustains us, we affirm both the holiness of God and one another. So let us continue to show up for one another, virtually, masked, in lines to vote, in our pajamas from the safety of our homes, because we are inextricably linked together, whether we like it or not. God's holiness is more than enough, and so are you. Know that you are treading on holy ground simply by remembering the blessedness of the whole communion. Amen. We turn now to the prayers of the people. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. We give you thanks to the community at Lomax, especially the leadership of Pastor Nelson and all who have participated in our conversations towards racial healing. We ask that your abiding presence and peace would prevail um, as our nation goes through an election this week. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick injured or suffering, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death. And uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit, those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. God, whose vision spans all the ages of the earth, help us to see in this moment the pain and suffering our sisters and brothers are subjected to, and give us the will to right the wrongs we have done by our actions and our inactions. Ease the pain of all your people. Help us to see beyond this moment and to embrace the wider perspective of your whole creation. Deliver us from fear, and lead us into a way of love and justice that makes room for all peoples. Send your spirit among us 
that we may know the healing power of your love. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus, the reconciler of the world. Amen. Let us pray together using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in our prayer for communion. God of love, we thank you for bringing us together in this place, on this day, to honor and celebrate you and your people, the living, loving body of Christ. Jesus told his disciples, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Bless this gathering as a sacramental rite, a visible sign of your love for us and our love for one another. Even in the absence of the bread and the wine, let us feed on you your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in our hearts with faith and thanksgiving. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning uh, for All Saints is I Sing a Song of the Saints to God, number 293 in the hymnal 1982.
Thank you all so much for joining us for worship this morning. Anyone who would like to is more than welcome to stick around for coffee hour. We'll have uh, a time of just sharing and connecting with one another. So thank you for being here this morning.